Welcome, welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. Uh, we're gonna get a good one for you today. Uh, we're gonna get well, a little first little housekeeping. We're getting to Jai Apatia versus El Zorro. Uh, unfortunately, will not be for the IBF Cruiserweight belt. Uh, Jai Apatia has just vacated that, from what I'm being told. Um, <laughs> all right, Jai Apatia just vacated that. Um, so that. He was supposed to, uh, well, I'll get into all that. Uh, he said he couldn't pass up the uh, biggest opportunity of his life, uh, the biggest payday of his life. I'm sorry, the biggest payday of his life. Uh, and and Bradis uh, wasn't available to fight. Um, George, uh, before we get into all this, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3 Boxing, 3 Boxing Blog, the Boxing Book, for every major fight. Uh, breaking it down so you had to bring down the house. Uh, so I had to consistently make money on the sport of boxing. We don't gamble. I'm in Texas, and we use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas, so I don't gamble. But if you do, I'm going to show you how to consistently make money on the sport of boxing. Uh, I'm going to show you that, how to make a second stream of income because the, the bookies, the odds makers, they don't know what they're doing. I do, and I'm going to show you how to make money on this sport uh, consistently. Um also, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing. You've seen a lot of good content up on those last two, uh, on those two channels. I was at the uh, Pro Grave Haney fight, and then I was at Bam and uh, Sonny this past week. So lots of content for this fight. But for this show, uh, we're going to get into the Cruiserweights in Riyadh. Am I saying that right? The Kingdom Arena in Riyadh uh, is no longer a title fight. It is still 12 rounds. Uh, Elias Zoro will... I'm not challenged for the title. Uh, Arizona, Elias Zorro will challenge Jai Apataya. Um, the odds on this are, 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 are stupendous. Um, it's a lot. Um, he's a massive, massive betting favorite. Um, 25 to 1, uh, which is not inappropriate. Uh, but we're going to get into how he can still make money on this fight. Uh, because I think this is a pretty good pretty good lock to, to make money on. Um, you know, there's some ways that you can make money on. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and some other options you can you can take that will also make you money. Um, all right, but let's get into the show. Uh, Jai Apatia is a pound-for-pound pound level fighter, tremendously skilled. Um, he, he beat Bradis back about a year and a half ago pretty convincingly. Um, you know, he didn't really have anything on his resume. Uh, that, that, that was really a breakout performance, uh, prior to that. Uh, the, the Braves fight was a breakout performance. The, the best win on his resume before that, um, I mean, really there wasn't much. Benjamin Keller was an undefeated guy. Uh, there's a Russian Nicholas Champlis. Am I saying that right? I think he's Russian. Um, there really wasn't much. Um. But he was dominant. Um, he got the chance with Bradis, and he, he you know, uh, he, he outboxed him. I thought one fairly wide. Um, then he, he went on for Jordan Thompson. Uh, I, and I think Thompson's a decent fighter. He destroyed Thompson in four rounds. Uh, that takes us to Elias Zorro. Um, Appetite is fast. He's skilled. He's, he's a pound for pound level guy. My only reservations on, 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 this fight is, it's just less than three months since he last fought, since he last fought Jordan Thompson. Now, Jordan Thompson was a fairly easy fight for him, um, and he was out of the ring for 14 months prior to that fight. So, you know, I just don't like when people take these fights on short notice against lesser opponents. I, I don't think he's going to be in trouble of losing the fight. My only concern is that he's not up for a fight. He's going to fight to the level of his fighter, and, and, and it's going to be harder than it should be because he just didn't get up for it. Um, he didn't have a great camp, you know, I don't know how much weight he's cutting, uh, but you know, all those things come into play. He's just not into it. He, we, we've seen this before, like Bam Rodriguez, uh, when he fought on, on short notice and other guys, they fight on, on super short, not short notice, uh, on, you know, they, they fight close together within a couple of months, of each other. That second one was just really, isn't top notch. Not that Jordan Thompson, you know, took a lot out of him. It was an easy fight for him. Um. But I just don't like necessarily coming back three months later to fight uh, an undefeated, but not exactly a prospect setting the world on fire. Um, you know, and Eli Zorro is, 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 is interesting uh, because he's not a puncher, except he's got this posterizing knockout um, against, uh, I'm going to butcher the name. It was two fights ago. 
Hosea Burton, um, and then he came back. Uh, and if I, he may have been losing. Uh, I'm the cards here. It was close. Uh, I thought he was probably down in the fight, but it was close. Uh, then he came back and fought a uh, Italian, Luca Diartensi, uh, and, and he and he pretty he was pretty dominant in that fight. I had him winning seven, eight two, eight two. I think I had it. Uh, a couple rounds he could have swung there. He's just not a world beater. He's a good fighter. Um, he's very easy to hit. What he what he is, he's not a big kidder. He's physically strong. Um, you know, he's reasonably athletic. He's pretty active early. I think he has some gas tank issues. Um, you know, he, he he's he, he's athletic. He he gets into a rhythm and he and he jabs head and body and, and he and he's got a good jab and he mixes it up. Um you know, he's still undefeated, which is important. He doesn't know how to lose. So I don't think he's going to just go in here and get knocked out right quick. I, I think we're going to go some rounds in this fight. Um, he throws a nice uppercut. Um, he can fight well on, on the inside, although I don't think that's his strength. Um, you know, he's, he's got pretty good speed. I think this is a guy that if you blew him up, you put him on some steroids, you, you gained him about 20 pounds, he could be a decent heavyweight contender, make some decent cash. He's not going to be a world champion or anything like that, but um, – you know, he's just too willing to exchange too, and he can't hit. Like he he can he can jab from the outside. I, I think that's where he's fighting. He's not gonna beat Alpatai regardless, right? He's not gonna beat Alpatai on the inside or Alpac from the outside. So uh, this is not just not a good fight for him. Uh because Alpatai is clearly the best guy in the weight class, I think. Like clearly, in my opinion. Um like I said, he may have gas tank issues, so he may fade late, and I'm kind of thinking Alpatai wins by late stoppage. Um but that's pretty much what he is. He's an athlete who can jab. He gets into a rhythm. He jabs head, body, head, body. He can keep you guessing a little bit. But ultimately, he's easy to hit, and he's too willing to exchange. And he doesn't. He does. He's not a hitter. I know he's got the, the, the one posterizing knockout uh, in a fight that might have been slipping away from him a little bit on the cards. He got it done. So give him kudos for that. But he's not fighting Hosea Burton. He's fighting the best guy in the world in that particular weight class. Um, so it's just not going to go well for him. Um, you know, he, he does some things well. It's just Apatia does everything well. Apatia, like I said, Apatia is a, is a, is a legitimate pound-for-pound pound caliber fighter. It's just hard to get that pound-for-pound pound list out of the cruiserweight division because there just aren't the names there. But he should pretty much run through these guys. Um, You, you know, the other one of note he has is, is Deck Spellman. Um, if you remember Deck Spellman... He's not particularly good. Uh, he's an English guy. And uh, he fought Anthony Yard at Lyndon Arthur back-to-back -back in uh, 2020. Um, that's why you, you may or may not remember him. Um, and uh, he got knocked out uh, by Yard and went the distance and fought eh, fairly competitive, probably won a couple rounds with Lyndon Arthur. Uh, but that, that's the best name on his resume, um, I, I think. You know, unless you want to go with one of the undefeated prospects. Uh, I mean, one of the uh, Burton or, or, or Tensi. Um, it's kind of fighter race. I, I don't think he's a terrible fighter. I, I don't see how any way, shape, or form that he can win this fight. But I, I think he can extend it. I think, you know, I think he can go late in the rounds. And that's kind of where we're going to make money. Uh, I, I don't see it ending in the first three. You know, if you, if you go back and you look at Apataya. Uh, Apataya, besides the Jordan Thompson fight, usually goes rounds. He went the distance uh, with Bredis. Um, when he fought Benjamin Kelhar, it went six. When he fought Mark Flanagan, it went eight. When he fought Nicholas Temporellis, Char Char Charlampus, it went all ten. Uh, when he fought uh, Iota, it, it went, you know, you go through, he's mostly fought rounds since he's, you know, so I, I expect this to go rounds. Um, you know, John Appetite isn't necessarily a guy gunning for the knockout. So I'm going to show you how to make money on this. So, you know, the money line, minus 2,500. We're not making money here. We're making $4 on a $100 bet. So we're going to do a two times bet and make $8 on a $200 bet. Okay. Uh, we're also going to take the under, uh, under five. Uh, under five. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, no, we are not taking under five and a half. We're taking over five and a half. And that's going to make us seventy-four dollars. So we're up to eighty-two dollars. Um, and then we're going to take Apataya by KO, TKO, or DQ. Uh, and that's going to make us fifteen dollars. So between those three bets, 
you know, we're making a hundred dollars on a four hundred dollar bet. So it's basically we we take twenty five to one odds, and if we can knock them out after the six and a half round, after the sixth round, basically, uh, it's gonna pay four to you know four to one money, right? So we take twenty five to one, and we you know get it down to four to one. If you want to, uh, if you, if you wanted to go uh, under the five and a half, you could bet some of the rounds. Like it might not be bad to bet those three rounds. You know, if he knocks him out in the third, fourth, or fifth, it's gonna make you some money. I'm not doing that. It's not a bad bet. Like if you bet, if he, you know, you put, I would make half a bet on each one. Fifty dollar bets. Um, gonna make about four, four fifty, depending on the round. Um, it's not bad. And then if you miss on all those, it didn't hurt you too bad uh, because you're going to get the over. I, I wouldn't do this. I'm not doing that. I don't think that's the smartest thing in the world to do. I I, I like to keep it simple. Um, just take the over five and a half. Over five and a half. Giant appetite by KO. And a giant appetite on the money line times two. And you're going to make a couple bucks on this. Um, you know, it's not huge, but I, I think it, it, it's, it's pretty good. This would be my lock of the week. Apatia by KO would be my lock of the week. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow 3D Box and 3D Box and blog, blog on all forms of social media. The boxing book comes at you for every single major fight. Uh, show you how to bring down the house, make money on, on every fight. Also, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. It is December 18th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.